It's a good few in there, yeah. The room is packed. Hello, you're listening to Kent Richard Van Coot and Hulk Lergy, just uh, walking into this babble here. And uh, there has been some protests regarding this, this meeting actually being held. And there has been a guard of presence here, but thankfully no protesters. So we're just tipping inside there now and uh, seeing what's happening. Yeah. There's a full house here in this meeting. You can see it just in through the door there. There's a couple of speakers there. Thanks. Um, good evening everybody, my name is Sinead Moore and I'm a secondary school teacher. I teach SBHE and just in April, just gone, I became the spokesperson for SBHE uh, for the ASDL. So <clears throat> just in terms of to address uh, Councillor Curran's point, one of the points she made was there was wide consultation. Well I have to say, you know, maybe it was remiss of me but a lot of people, including myself, did not really feel consulted around this who is helping us with our neighbourly watch. Uh, asked me what I thought, and I said, SVHG. And he gave me a very dirty look, I have to say. And I said, oh, don't you? No, don't be me. And he said, he was at a meeting, his child is nine, in the primary school, and he was handed a leaflet. And in the leaflet, what, what, what was flashing red lights for him, his daughter is nine, the principal gave him this leaflet and was talking about masturbation. And he was really angry and really felt he's a normal guy, he's a guard, whatever. He does not want his daughter to be learning about masturbation. And he's shocked that that's the first he heard of it when the principal of the primary school, there was a parent teacher meeting, gave it to him. Now, so, so just, just those points there. Um, I have no problems with, with certain things perhaps being developed. But there's some things that I, as a teacher, will have massive problems teaching. And I'm wondering, is there going to be conscientious objection for teachers as well as parents? You know, um, because there's certain things, and pornography, I mean, I don't agree with it. My two daughters are going out with guys, and they, the boys were told, if you don't give up watching pornography, we're finished. And the lads give up watching pornography, I hope. But, you know, it just doesn't seem to have a place for them. They're young girls, they're 19 and 23, and they don't want their boyfriends watching porn. So, thank you. Generally, uh, my name is Laura, Vincent Laura. I don't care, who knows? Uh, I'm not on Facebook, and uh, I don't believe susceptible to idiots and an opinion on me. That's the way I feel. Um, I'm not surprised our Labour um, friend here objecting to everything here. In, in a sense, she will object to all of it because she has an agenda and it's a political agenda. It's not hey. a this, 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 this discussion here is not about sex. Now, you'll probably think I'm a crazy, but it's uh, it's happening throughout the West with Marxist ideology. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here. And what, if you give, what, if you give yeah. power, for instance, to children, you take it away from the parents. But the left love that sort of thing. It undermines the authority of society. So you're talking about the rights of a four-year-old to have a... I nearly said it. It, it, does the, our Labour representative really believe that's a, a valid point to make? That a child who it might inadvertently, as a one year old, in, in their sleep have an erection, and I know it happens, and they might start lying over it. You think that's a valid thing to enshrine a law that they're entitled to masturbate? What sort of idiocy is that? However, I thought you the few points we'd make. Um, Reduce abortion and stuff like that, and, 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 and teach um, teach contraception. Oh, this is a solution to unwanted uh, pregnancies and stuff like that. It isn't. It absolutely isn't. I agree with the, the, the top table here. There is no evidence that it reduces it. There is a lot of evidence that it increases STD, STIs or STDs, and it increases unwanted pregnancies. They're absolutely, and I'm not a right winger saying this, I'm, I have an interest in the whole subject, and I've been reading about it for years, 
In the 60s, I was reading about pornography. I was reading about abortion. I was reading about women's rights. In the 70s, I was reading about it. Probably before this lady was even born, I was reading about it. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. That if there is no moral guidance or ethics with young people, and it used to be the frighteners that the Catholic Church put on them, but then it was the frighteners that pregnancy put on them. But if you take all that away and give them rights, there is no stopping the, I'd say, the, the generosity of society, and that's what will happen. It, there's evidence all over that it happens. The, the difficulty with society throughout the ages has been controlling young men. That's what our problem is. Everybody, that's why they married them off young. That's why they, that, that's, the, it, there is even evidence that. Uh, stay in this country and decide to fulfill their potential here as Irish men and women. There's something going on that's not really being discussed here. All this talk of putting abortion through sex education, now they're talking about all kinds of everything. It, they are diversions from what our government is really doing. They're smoke screens. What our government is doing is borrowing enormous amounts of money that your grandchildren are going to have to pay interest on to European banks for the rest of their life and your great-grandchildren as well. The reason that that's happening is because we are so indebted to those banks that our government is under their control. And the way that's done is there are five or six or seven or eight or maybe ten senior politicians, financial people, who are in the pockets of the European banks and who are selling Ireland to them because those banks control everything and all they want is to lend more money to Ireland so that Ireland can seem to be a prosperous country so that those people can get their parties re-elected. You've got to look at those parties and very carefully see that there are five or six people in each of them. The rest of the TDs are what I would call dependent TDs, i.e. they'd never get elected on their own without party support. They could not stand alone as your independent representative and stand up for what you believe. I find this a bit difficult because I've got 10 grandchildren on my shoulders, okay? Um, if you think about it very carefully, you can see that any TD that stands for any party in this country who does not agree with what those three or four or five people in that party want, they are deselected. You're seeing it all the time, the talks of deselection. If you look back at what Sinn Féin did to Peter Tobin and to Carl Nolan, if you look what Fina Gael did to uh, Lucinda and to Peter uh, Matthews, those guys couldn't stand on their own and they thought they could. So if you don't put toe the party line, if you don't do what they want you to do, you're out and you're finished. So what you've actually got is about 10 people running the country. It doesn't matter what party. So what I would propose to anybody here is that you go, I, I, I would not believe that given this power that there is any chance that this radical sexual education will stop. I think it will go through. There's a power behind it. Very few people can see. I have one minute now, speaker, please. Okay. So what I would advocate as the only chance we've got is to find in each constituency throughout Ireland an independent Christian candidate who will run for Dáil Éireann. Somebody who 
responsible to their constituents under an agreement between the constituents and the independent Christian candidates, not a party, so that you, the constituents, can hold that candidate to account at the next election. That you will do, he will do, what, or she will do what you say they should do. So, I can't see it any other way than that. The only chance we have to bring a sensible future for our grandchildren is through independent TDs. I thank you very much on behalf of all of our grandchildren for listening to what I have to say. And there is a website called Ireland, not a website, a uh, Facebook page of mine called Ireland 2025. It's been online since 2015, and I'm hoping that you will uh, attend to that and read that. If you can't, if you're not on Facebook, just go to Google and type in Kildare Street Jokers, one, two, three. <laughs> the power in this country is the people in this room. And in the experience that I've had with the HSC, what I have met on the doorstep is a woman with a baby in her, in her arm and another baby down there. And she educated me in HSC. But what she told me was that she was afraid of what the school were going to do to her children. And what I'm afraid of in the country that I live in, that I have fought in two local elections for, and a country I am very proud of, is that the people in this country are being silenced. People are afraid to speak out and say it. No more. And this, is, this, is, this really bothers me. It's the reason why I made myself available. I'm worried about my country. I'm worried about my children's children's future. Not just on economic grounds, but the idea that anybody is going to tell my grandchild of five years of age, binary, non-binary, I have no problem with LGBT, none at all. I have no problem following the Scandinavian model. That's 10 to 11 years of age. So all I would ask you tonight to do, and they, there is a model there, we, why do we try to do it differently? And 10 to 11 is an appropriate age, four to seven is not. Thank you for listening to me. Please get out and tell your TVs and give the people in this country the voice. Thank you. Uh, Okay, all right, you go down the back for the next one. Uh, I'll just keep it very short. Uh, I think that it will be... Orange top uh, down the left as we go down the center. Hi, it's Rose. I think I'm the youngest person in this room. Please, I'm a little scared talking in front of all of you. Um, I'm... Well, there's a few things I want to address. First of all, the website that you showed, the you described as disgusting sexual acts. I, you didn't mention any correlation between that website and the um, suggested curriculum. And if there isn't any, then it seems a little irrelevant. Um, and you talked about the one night stands. But from what I gathered from the presentation, one night stands weren't being added to the curriculum, consent was. And consent comes in all shapes and forms, including because marital rape is a crime and does happen. And wasn't illegal. Uh, no, I'm not sure exactly the year, but it was a lot. I was surprised when I did learn. And it happens in relationships that have been going on for a long time, and it happens in one night stands as well. Uh, but I think you can't have sexual orientation, sexual education, without consent, because otherwise, it's not sex. It's rape, and it's an epidemic that's been going on. And I think it needs to be talked about. Uh, again and again, but you need consent before anything else. And then the thing I felt most strongly about was that your name is Let Kids Be Kids, but that doesn't seem to extend to trans children. And I know not everyone will agree with me, and I don't expect you to, but as someone who has known about trans people since I was 
four, I believe. I don't ever remember learning. I just know I've learned my whole life. I, that didn't change how I felt about my gender. You did say that to be a woman, how can you just feel like a woman? But I don't know how I would describe why I feel like a woman besides I just feel like it. It's just, it is something I think you can recognize in yourself and it can be hard to define, especially if you don't have the words to define it. And if you're... Um, and, please do not interrupt the speaker, please. Um, and I think if you want to let kids be kids, their gender is one of the first things they'll be able to understand about themselves and not validating their identity or not giving them the opportunity to know that there are other identities, I think isn't really letting them be themselves. And those examples you used about the prison system, I can't speak to them because I haven't done the research myself, but I think if you learn about what transgender is from an early age, then it'll be much easier to recognize 